Place it well. Good afternoon, James Hillary here, uh, Cluck Muck Cook on social media. We're going to do our scone bake along, or scone bake along, depending on which part of the country you're from, um, on Facebook Live on the Nan National Ankylosis Fondylitis Society webpage. So we're just going to give people a few moments to join and then we're going to get going. Grab yourself a cup of tea, uh, we should be going in about one minute. If you can do an emoji or a wave or anything as you join, then we can just see if, how many people are joining. We've got about five joins so far. So we, oh, 15. <laughs> sorry, I'm, my cameraman did a one on a five, and I thought we just meant one to five. Um, <laughs> okay, we're going to get going. First um, of all, we just want to preheat our oven to 220C if it's a conventional oven, 200 fan. Uh, I forget what that is um, in Fahrenheit, but I'll check when I get back. So I'm going to start by preheating the oven. We don't want a nice hot oven for scones. So I'm go I've got a fan oven, so I'm going up to 200. And I'll get that warming up. Then we'll go and check out the ingredients. So if you're gas, that's gas mark seven. If you're Fahrenheit, I think you're going to have to ask Alexa today because I haven't got that written down, sorry. So, for ingredients, we're going to need some self-raising flour, 350 grams. A pinch of salt, so about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Some baking powder, some cold butter and milk, which are in the fridge at the moment. Uh, we're going to have a squeeze of a lemon and about three tablespoons of caster sugar. We're going to glaze with an egg. Um, so you need something to beat that with. Then for equipment. Gas mark was it? Uh, gas mark seven. So a nice hot oven. Then you need a cutter. That's about a five centimetre one. You can make them any size you want. Uh, some measuring spoons. A knife to chop up the butter. Just a normal, not sharp kitchen. Uh, sorry, like a dinner knife. I've got a whisk. You can use just a fork or a, a bigger whisk for whisking up your egg and a brush just for glazing when we glaze, a bowl and a set of scales. So first off, if we're all good to go, I'm going to weigh out my dry ingredients into my big glass bowl. So 350 grams of self-raising flour. Even when I do baking flour, so let's switch the scale on first. 350 grams of flour. You're going to need some more for dusting, so keep it by your side. I never bother um, sifting flour for these sorts of recipes. Modern flour is so well um, milled now, you don't really need to sift it. So that's 350 grams of flour. I'm going to do three tablespoons of caster sugar. You can use granulated, whatever sugar you've got, doesn't really matter. Then we're going to go in with one teaspoon of baking powder. Again, just a level teaspoon. Pop that in the middle. And then about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Again, you could just do a big pinch, you really don't need to measure it, you kind of want just a little bit of salt. Again, salt is a flavour enhancer, so well worth pointing in. You can leave it out if you want, it won't cause too much problem. And then just using your knife, just stir and mix your sugar and baking powder through your flour. 
And if you just uh, click on an emoji, just to let us know you're keeping up with me. And then we'll go and get the butter and milk out of the fridge. Okay, it looks like most of you have caught up or you're with me, so I'm going to just grab the butter because you want it nice and cold out of the fridge. And I'm going to grab the milk and I'll get a jug as well so we can measure out the milk. So we'll start by measuring out the milk. We need 175 mils. I'm using um, semi-skim. You can use full fat, whatever you've got in the fridge. You can also use um, soy milk. Uh, Anne-Marie has no baking powder, does that matter? Uh, no, you'll get away. The self-raising flour should be um, strong enough to raise it. The baking powder just gives it a bit of an extra lift, so you'll be fine without it. So we got 175 mils or 175 grams, just by weighing it, it's a lot more accurate. And then we're just going to put a squeeze of lemon in. You could use a teaspoon of um, white vinegar, just anything acidic. And again, that just helps activate the baking powder or the raising agents in the self-raising flour. It's a bit like using buttermilk. Um, so just a, a bit of a squeeze of lemon juice in there. So you've just got a bit of acid. And I'll leave that to the side and that will curdle a little bit and that will be perfect. Next thing, if you're all good there, we're gonna chop up little squares of butter and put them into our flour mixture. So we need 85 grams of butter. I'm just cutting them into chunks just because it's going to make it easier to rub in when we get to that section. So 85 grams of butter. I'll give you a couple of seconds just to make sure you're caught up again. If you don't want to do little emojis, that's great. And again, any questions, fire away, and Ollie will ask them as he sees them come through. We'll just give people a couple of seconds just to make sure they're caught up. I know I can rush through this because I make a ton of scones. So. We've got National Cream Tea Day coming up in a couple of weeks. So perfect to get practicing your scones. Great for an afternoon tea. If you can't get out and grab a cream tea at your local cafe, depending if they're open or not. So perfect for jam, cream, obviously jam first then cream. I like it the Cornish way. If you're from Devon, they put cream first and then jam, which is just odd because you can't spread the jam. But I'm sure we'll get into that Twitter debate again uh, very shortly. Everyone seems to have caught up. So now all you want to do is cut in the butter just to make it slightly smaller. The idea is you want to keep this butter as cold as possible. I'll move that off there. So we start by just cutting it in, which is just making the lump smaller. And then this will be easier for when you get in with your hands. down a bit keep your knife because we're going to use that to stir with then just with your fingertips you want to start breaking down the butter a little bit more this is called rubbing in 
Same way you make an apple crumble or the start of various other cakes. A lot of the uh, stuff we've been making together has been melting butter because it's nice and easy and blends in easy. Um, but where you want layers or a bit of lamination, you need little lumps of butter to produce the steam to give you those lovely little layers. And you want it like a fine breadcrumb. So it'll take a minute or two. It's quite therapeutic, this piece. If you want to add flavours to scones, you can add in a handful of dried fruit, it's lovely. Um, one of my favourite scones that I had in uh, Devon last year when we was away on holiday, uh, a place called Periwinkle Cottage in uh, just off of Export, is they did lemon drizzle scones. I'm a big fan of lemon drizzle anything. So you can put in some lemon zest into these, do a very similar mixture that we did last week on top of our muffins and just drizzle that onto the, uh, the scones as they come out the oven. Serve them with a bit of lemon curd. And then for Easter, I also make hot cross scones. So you do exactly the same mix, but add in a tablespoon of mixed spice and then pipe little crosses on top. Another great variation, but these are good traditional plain scone. So now you see that's quite a nice crumb. I'm going to close up. Quite fine. Still got a few little pea sized lumps in. That's good because that will help with the lamination. I'll give you a few moments just to catch up on that bit. Hopefully it's going well for you. What I will do when we're baking, because um, we'll bake these for about 10 minutes uh, in the oven, they don't take too long is I'll show you a quick strawberry jam you can make. You don't need to make your own. Um, I've got a pot of jam in the cupboard uh, and some clotted creams put on them. But if you want to make, a, I call it punnet jam, you just need a punnet of strawberries, an equal weight of sugar. I'll show you how to do that when we've got the little uh, breakers we're baking. Are we good to go to the next spot? Looks like we are. So make a well in the middle. Pour your milk and lemon juice mix in and we stir it with the knife again we're keeping our hands out because for as long as possible because we want that butter to stay cold and in the lumps that it's in so we'll start with just mixing with a knife i'm one of these people that i'm not sure whether it really matters um, you could just go in with your hands a bit like good pastry chefs will freeze their flour, their butter and everything so it's ice cold. I just make pastry with whatever we've got in the fridge or, or in the cupboard. Really not that precious. Right, so it starts to come to a shaggy mess is the best way to put it. So now we get in with our hands. We just want to bring it together into a ball and just get all that dry flour that's at the bottom into your scone mix. You don't want to overwork it, you just want to combine it. Sugar, flour and butter, are those ingredients not bad for AS? Is one of the questions. <laughs> um, there's, they can be. Um, so it, it, it's a good debate. There's, I don't think there's any empirical evidence around anti-inflammatory diet and AS. That said, people swear by turmeric, ginger, garlic in their diets. Some people do find that sugar and butter and flour can inflame their AS and it's down to individuals. Um, as a, a, an AS sufferer, sufferer and a big baker, I don't find that it impacts me that much. Um, so if it does impact you, steer away from it. That's your personal choice. Um, I'd love to see more data. I'm just doing a nutrition course at the moment because I want to understand more about looking at the nutritional aspects of kind of the gut biome because there's been research around the, the bacteria in your, your gut and how that impacts AS. There's, 
lots of studies going on, but it's down to personal choice. Same with gluten intolerance, not celiac disease, because that is a true disease. Some people are sensitive to gluten. Um, it's what works for you, really. But I would say with AS is that we can have a challenging and miserable life at times when we're in pain. So if you want a scone, a bit of jam and cream to cheer you up, I'm going to advocate that because mental health is just as important as physical health. Hopefully that kind of answers. But if not, the Nest website may have information around uh, the impacts of food or more information. So hopefully you've all got your ball of dough. What we're going to do is something called chaffing now. So sprinkle some flour on top, some flour on your board or your work surface. You can use plenty of it. We're just flattening the dough with the ball of your hand and folding it over. Turn it round, flatten it a bit, fold it over. Turn it round, flatten it a bit, fold it over. So that will help build some layers. Uh, Roslyn says, can she substitute some sourdough starter discard for some of the flour? If yes, does it have to be savoury scones? Uh, good question. You, uh, you could probably add sourdough starter into pretty much anything that you're making. It doesn't have to be uh, a savoury scone. It will give you a bit more of an acidic taste. Uh, but you've got to remember your sourdough starter is probably 50% um, flour and 50% water. Um, so you may want to knock back a little bit of the milk, but scones are fine if they're quite wet. So I would go for it if you want to put a little bit. I wouldn't put too much in, probably 50 grams will give it enough flavour. Uh, it can be sweet. I make sweet sourdoughs. I make raisin cinnamon sourdough. So it doesn't have to be savoury if it's got a sourdough mix in there. Okay, so now we can see the marbling of the butter in the scone just coming through. With, there'll be layers in there so we don't need a rolling pin I just flatten it out with my hand to just less than the height of my uh, cutter it's all high tech I don't like using and having to wash up lots of bits and pieces different on the bake-off because you had someone to do all the washing up for you and the food tech team were brilliant you just whatever you needed clean you put your hand put it up in the air and they'll grab it and get you another fresh one my wife is not as accommodating as that, so I have to do all my own washing up. And Oliver runs away the second the filming's over, so he doesn't have to get involved in tidying up. So if you're just below the height of your, it's about an inch high, um, is my cutter. Uh, and it's about five centimetres wide. So put it on close to the edge so you can get as many as possible out. Don't twist them. If you twist them, it can um, bung up the the growth so it kind of affects the side and they can go wonky same with when you glaze you don't want any um, egg to run down the side if possible before I do that I'm going to dip it in flour just to make it cut cleaner you can use the fluted ones make it look pretty do heart shapes do whatever shapes you want just go straight down And then if they get stuck on, you can move them straight to a, a lime baking sheet. If you've got a non-stick non sheet, that's fine. Just stick on a non-stick sheet uh, or dust a bit of flour on. But I normally just have a bit of baking parchment. So we'll get as many as we can out of this batch. And then we'll just bring it all together again. So as you can see, if you can do a close up of the sides, you start to see the lamination in there, and that's what's going to help them grow. I'm not sure if Pauline's on, um, but she asked, How do I get my scones so tall? Part of it is I cut them quite thick anyway, um, but it's, it's the being careful not to twist also helps. So I'm going to go and just squidge the dough back together. Back into a bowl again don't have to be too precious how many does the dough make this should probably make about eight if you're using a five centimeter cutter seven or eight uh, i probably wouldn't roll the dough more than uh, bring it back together more than twice after you've cut the initial lot so I'll... and the first ones always look the neatest so they're the ones that go on instagram And they won't spread out wide, so you, you don't have to leave too much of a gap, but leave a little gap in between.
you can just, um, if you haven't got a cutter, is just do it as one big lump, as we did as a ball, flatten it down to about the same thickness, and just cut it into triangles. That's a nice look as well. So I've got eight there. I've got a bit left. Not wanting to waste. But the more you work, the less fluffy they'll be. So you'll see these will be the fluffiest, and these have been worked a bit more, so they won't be quite as fluffy. So we've got nine out of there. That's not a bad number. How deep is the cutter? I'm sure the cutter be. The, the cutter's about an inch deep, so two, two and a half centimetres, probably, um, which is a decent height. Uh, it's, they're just a standard off of Amazon set of ring cutters. And again, you can make a lot bigger scones as well. So these are five centimetres wide. I quite like if you're just having one to have like a seven centimetre wide one, and then just make probably six, five, six out of the same mix. But, but if you've got friends around to go for smaller ones and then everyone gets a couple. If we do thumbs up, if you're, you're kind of roughly where we're at. We're rocking on them today. So next uh, we're going to just give them a bit of a glaze. You can use a bit of milk on top, you don't have to use egg if you don't want to use egg. If you're vegan you could have done these with, um, rather than butter, we could have used like a, a flora non-dairy spread. That will work as well, I've made vegan hot cross scones. Um, but the egg gives a bit of a nice um, glaze, so I'd rather go in with a nice Piece of egg glaze, just give it a nice gloss on the top. Um, is a one to two centimetre gap between each scone okay on the baking tray? Yeah, that should be plenty. Some of these are only about a centimetre or so, so I've got a couple of fingers in between each, but you can squeeze them in, they'll, they'll generally go up rather than out, so you'll be okay. So now we just beat the egg, use a fork, if you've got a big whisk, use a big whisk. So make it so it's nice and bubbly, because that way when you um, when you paint it on, it's not you're not going to be gloopy as such. Then get your paintbrush, uh, your pastry brush. If you haven't got a pastry brush, you can just dip your finger in and just rub it on the top. Um, but again, try and keep it away from dribbling over the edges. You want it all over the top, but not running down the sides. Again, I quite like the look of the cracked, rustic looking ones when they come out the oven. I think they give them a bit more character. Okay, hopefully you're all at the same spot. Time to pop them in the oven. They're going to the uh, hot oven again. That should be preheated to 220C, 200 fan, gas mark seven. And we'll put them in there for 10 minutes. I know we've put them sort of middle top oven. Generally it's a little bit hotter there. Let's get the timer on. So they're going in for 10 minutes. I'm just gonna wash my hands. Are there any questions? Are there Not at the moment. Right. We'll let you get those in the oven. And what we'll do is, uh, 
I'll show you a super quick. Oops, stay in here and do that. Super quick strawberry jam again. Shop pool is just as good, but strawberries are now coming into their season, um, and they'll be plentiful soon. So just slice up a punnet of strawberries. If you've got fresh strawberries, you can always put fresh strawberries and cream on as well onto a scone or scone. As I said, we just want equal weights of strawberries to sugar. It's quite important to have that sugar content, otherwise jam doesn't work as well, it doesn't set. There is a lot of science behind jam making, surprisingly, that something looks so simple. Dan Beasley Harding, off of last year's, um, actually did quite a few tests of jam on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, around ratios and he definitely found that if you cut out the sugar or trying to reduce sugar it never works as well Can you give us a thumbs up if you're all in the oven with your scones what make are the weighing scales uh, they are salter. I think I just got them off of Amazon or um, Argos. Just a cheap set of scales, um, which I've used for probably two or three years. They've lasted really well. I, when I'm bread making though, they're not very accurate if you want kind of just between sort of 0 and 5, 0 7, 0 10 grams. So I use some precision scales for all that. Which are really good at getting, especially if you're using yeast and salts in breads, it's very uh, critical to get a really accurate measure. So handy little set of scales just for doing that. Really small weights. You can buy scales that have, that have got like a little pad for the for the finer detail on them as well, but they're quite expensive, whereas those are pretty cheap on Amazon. Right, so we've got 328 grams of strawberries. Now you could go in with an equal amount of jam sugar that's got pectin in it already, or you can use just normal sugar and a squeeze of lemon, which will just give you enough pectin to help it set. So then just give it a good squeeze, oh, spray the cameraman, of lemon juice in there. That will help with setting. We'll put it onto a hob, start off with a medium heat. You want the sugar and strawberries to start breaking down um, and dissolving before you bring it to a boil. So we'll start to see that simmer. I'll let Arthur keep an eye on that while I throw this in the bin. So we could do a survey of the people who are watching. Are you jam first or cream first on your scones? It would be good to see. Uh, What's the heat of the oven, sorry? Heat of the oven is 220 centigrade if it's a conventional oven, 200 centigrade fan, gas mark. Seven. Seven, I think it was. Check the notes. Gas mark seven, yeah. Yeah, gas mark seven. 
for 10 minutes. Just keep an eye on them though, around sort of eight minutes or so. We'll start to see this. The strawberries will start releasing their juices and we'll start seeing this mixing. It's a 50-50 split on jam cream. Oh. It's like majority jam first. Ah, oh, that's the right one. Do we have jam first actually in the audience? So we do a cream tea hour on a Thursday, which is a, an hour of tweeting along at eight o'clock, different, different hosts um, created by jam first, who obviously is a passionate advocate for uh, jam first. And there's often a, uh, a Twitter poll and a, a good uh, debate. I won't say argument over what's best. Also seen that M&S have bought out a clotted cream that is strawberry flavoured and I just find that a bit odd. I'd rather have strawberry jam or strawberries than separate cream. So now you can see it's started to, uh, to combine and melt down a bit. I'm going to crank up the temperature. My maximum is nine on this and I'm going to get out a thermometer. Scones. Some of mine have got a bit wonky, but everyone loves a wonky scone. So if you haven't got a thermometer, you could just bring it to the boil, boil it for around eight minutes. You should be good. Way of testing it, um, if you haven't got a thermometer, is put a salsa into your freezer so it's ice cold. Then after about seven, eight minutes, pour a little bit of jam onto it. Give it a second to cool and just or if it wrinkles, it's ready. If you push and your finger just goes through it and there's no wrinkles, keep it boiling for a little bit longer. Again, this is purely optional, the easiest uh, option is go and buy a pot of jam. Any more questions? Not at the moment. Has everyone got their scones in the oven? Did we get a yes to that? Yeah, most people have got them in the oven. Brilliant. If you want to carry on the following along on the bank alongs, if there's anything particular that you fancy learning or doing, uh, as long as it's a relatively quick bake, happy to take uh, suggestions. So if you want to ping in the comments, um, for people watching this back when we saved it down, if you want to put in requests, I'm sure um, we'll be able to try and accommodate the best we can. Obviously, I won't do a sourdough bake along because that takes all day, at least end of night to do. So simple things like this is perfect for uh, getting everyone baking and a bit of fun on a Sunday afternoon. Is there an idea for the next cook along yet or not? Uh, no, I got this idea because uh, Jam first mentioned it, um, that um, National Cream Tea Day was coming. So we want to get this up to about 105, 106. I've got a suggestion of white chocolate chip muffins. Oh yeah, I can do white chocolate chip muffins, that's a good one. And new biscuit recipes. Yeah, I've got some nice biscuit recipes. So. A couple of good suggestions there. Another nice suggestion is something tarty. Oh, yeah, tart's a good one. Yeah, I think pastry is a really good um, skill to learn. So maybe we'll do a tart one next. We could potentially do like a lemon curd tart or a chocolate tart. Ah, oh, that's hot. Um, when you're making jam, be very careful because it is like molten lava. It'll get up to around 100 degrees pretty quickly. And this is why you need to do it for about eight, seven, eight minutes. Strong smell. Yeah. And stir it around because you will get hot spots and cold spots. Huh? Another suggestion is white chocolate soft cookies, not hard ones. Oh, like the American style cookie, yeah. No, I like the sound of that. Treacle tart. 
Oh, I love a treacle tart. Right, now I'm in a quandary because I can hear my scones are beeping and this is nearly ready. So I'm going to get the scones out and I'm going to leave that bubbling and hopefully by the time I get back it'll be ready. Let's have a look at these on. Oh, I have had some uh, falling over disasters. I'm going to leave them in for probably a minute more. Hopefully yours aren't as wonky as mine. But if you go and check them now, just to be safe. Twenty seconds to go on the scones. Should he take them out, Chris Holland? Uh, Chris, if, um, if they're looking nice and golden brown, yeah, take them out. You you should be good. Mine are still just a little bit paler than I'd like, so I've left mine in for just a minute more, but go with your gut, Chris. And thanks for joining again, Chris, that's from our NAS group. Oh, we're getting so close. Delicious bubbly lava. Right, while that's still going up, I'm going to take them out of the oven. To the table. Mm. Some of mine have fallen right over. I'll put the pretty ones at the front. I've now realised I've got all the tea towels in the house on this table. So once you're happy with them, just move them. When I folded back the second batch, I should have folded it a bit tighter, but they all taste delicious. That's a pretty looking one, put them at the front. Right, the jam should be ready as well, so I'm just going to take that off the heat. I'll be back in one sec. Okay, has everyone got theirs out of the oven? I've got my homemade jam. Once that cools, that will set up nicely. And then I'll grab the cottage cream. So I've gone for good old fashioned Rudder's clotted cream. You can use extra thick um, double clotted cream, you can use whipped cream, or if you haven't got cream, butter and jam is just as good. So again, you'll see the lovely lamination and flakiness. You can just break them in half. Nice flaky scones. Oh, nearly committed a carbon sin and went cream first. Little blob of jam on. Oh, 
little blob of cream and yes these aren't health healthy snacks but just have one and there are your lovely fresh warm jam and uh, clotted cream scones you could use your own that's still like lava so I'm not going to touch it yet but I'll post that on Facebook later uh, just to show you how it's come out so cheers hope you enjoy National Cream Tea Day in a couple of weeks hope your scones come out well um, tag me in pictures if you put them on Twitter or Insta I'd love to see how they've come out or if you comment on Facebook that'd be fantastic if you do want to keep these going more than happy to do them every couple of weeks love some of the suggestions so we can definitely work through some of those any questions before we go and I'm just going to take a quick bite mm. Hopefully your scones have come out well. Can you give us a thumbs up or a sad face if they didn't come out as well? Again, even if they are wonky, you can just split them and jam and cream them. No one will ever know. We will devour these as a family later. The joys of live baking. Are we all good? Excellent. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me again on a lovely rainy, sunny <laughs> Sunday afternoon. We'd hope there'll be a gorgeous sunny day so we could pop outside and pretend we're having a picnic, but no such luck. Uh, I hope you've had fun. If you, can you like the video, comment on it and join me again in a couple of weeks. Thanks all very much. Take care. Bye.